I'm very excited. Drum roll, please. Wow. Oh my. Wow. Hey! Akio Fusion AB SKO2. So here's my review of the Ankyo Fusion AV SKO2 speaker. It's trash. All right, I guess the word trash was a little harsh. Please don't go bantering me in the comments section if you own a pair of these and you actually enjoy them. I just, when I hooked them up, they didn't sound very good to me at all. Uh, I kind of expected them maybe to sound boomy, if anything, you know, due to the passive radiator. It's a three-way design with two 8-inch woofers. One is actually a passive radiator, which is very common in things like Bluetooth speakers. And they've actually, because of Bluetooth speakers, I think, kind of have made a rise in the past couple decades. Now, I do remember seeing a pair of these in a department store when I was younger in the 90s. Or at least they looked exactly like them. Now, they could have been an Infinity speaker, which I've read online that these are actually mocking, and these came with those kind of horrible shelf systems. Now, I've only had nothing but good experience with Ankyo, and this is honestly the first speaker from Ankyo that I didn't like the way it sounds. So, what I really want to do, and what I'm really excited to do now because of this, is I want to go inside of this, and I just kind of want to see how it's made, see if somebody's been in there, see if something's disconnected, and then, you know, check out the crossover, check out the components, check out how it's built. So I guess really without too much yapping and me going down any rabbit holes, let's go ahead and take this apart and see what's actually going on inside there. I'm really looking forward to this. So like I was saying before, I've only kind of known Akio to be a good brand. And um, it's just really weird that these speakers don't sound as good or sound the way that they do. I mean, literally any of the other speakers that I have, I think sound a lot better than this. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's something we can fix. Maybe we can do a future video on it. Maybe it's, I don't know, some materials, different drivers. I mean, I don't, wouldn't want to spend too much money on it, but... So this driver is actually the passive radiator. So this is, I think would be the easiest to take out or to get access to the inside, seeing as there's not gonna be any speaker leads connecting to it. But here we go. There's some long winded screws, I'll tell you what. I don't want this driver to just go plopping out of here. All right. I'm very excited. Drum roll, please. Wow. Oh my. <laughs> Wow, where's the beef indeed? So, I mean, first thing right off the bat that I'm seeing here is, uh, here, let me get you in a little bit closer. Hopefully, well, yeah, we can see not too bad. Uh, man, as far as that crossover goes, that is just lackluster. There is absolutely no polyfill in here. It's uh, maybe a half inch thick MDF. So, I mean, it's not a horrible box by any means. But, wow. These things are going for $350 online. So, basically, in my opinion, 
the way to tell a decent, I wouldn't say really high end, but a much better type of crossover or speaker, well, is in the crossover. And in my opinion, if there's no inductor coils, it's not very good. Some speakers will actually just have an electrolytic capacitor connected to the mid-range and to the tweeter, and that just kind of stops the low frequencies. Therefore, the low, the woofer, will receive, you know, the whole entire frequency range, which isn't very good. So, I don't know. I'd have to take that crossover out to actually examine it, but I'd imagine that might be up somewhere to start. Let me go ahead and flip this over and get this into a better position and grab some light so I can actually get you guys in there so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, to make things a little simpler, I went ahead and took all of the drivers out and that way we can get a better look. And I just kind of wanted to take a look at all of them. Now they don't look like they're, you know, really a horrible, horrible drivers or anything, like anything's bad quality. But uh, for the people who are interested in the speaker numbers, I know some of you guys are. We'll run through them real quick. Now the 9440 down there, I'm imagining that's a date code. I'm imagining that means it's the 40th week of 94. And then uh, there's the woofer, like that one would be the 33rd week of 94. Uh, I notice the actual serial numbers or whatever are only three increments off and uh it honestly looks like this is just a basket and a spider and the cone and then the surround of the regular tweeters or excuse me of the regular speakers and then they just kind of bolt on the the coil and the magnet which isn't too beefy of a magnet but i mean honestly not too bad i'm imagining it's got to do something with that crossover i mean it doesn't seem to be like a horrible setup and you know the materials don't seem too bad but uh let's go ahead and move these so we can look on the inside an inside look not really too much going on that's the back of the crossover that's kind of what the top of the crossover looks like So, I mean, not very many components on there. And like I said, there's no inductor coils. This is really making me wonder if I can upgrade this. Um, I'm not exactly sure if you're supposed to put polyfill in a speaker that has a passive radiator, but definitely going to look into it. And um, I've seen a lot of crossovers, three-way crossovers online. I mean, even Walmart has them. And I think it would be worth it for me to go ahead and maybe buy one of them. I think you can get them from like $25 to $40, $50. Of course, you can get really good ones. But, I mean, I think just one of the cheaper ones would really do this some justice. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hook these up to my proper amplifier. Hook these up to my Denon. And uh, we're going to run them with our good old Pioneers at first. And then without changing anything, I'm going to hook up these speakers just so you can hear a difference. And I know that you will be able to hear a difference. It's very, very easy to hear the difference. So let's see if the old Denon can make them sound good. We will also be using the subwoofer amplifier with the 212s. I'm not going to disconnect them. We're going to keep them hooked up. This is when you see me from SOMM.
I'm sure this is horrible lighting, but so there it was. They actually sounded a lot better on my Denon than any other thing that I put them on. But um, I'm definitely going to get that crossover for them, and I'm going to try them out and maybe change out on the tweeter because I like more of a brilliant, kind of a more refined tweeter. Maybe some polyfill. I don't know. We're definitely going to do something. Come back next time and check that out. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.